I see a little snout popping out of the bed. Do you? Hello, good morning. Well, good morning, Lionheart. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing? Actually, let's do it this way. This might be more fun. Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? Great. Well, today, since they've opened up some of the hiking trails, I'm going to go off to Griffith Park, and we're going to hit one of the trails, and I'm going to show you one of the scenes from an old, early 1920s Rudolph Valentino picture. You guys are going to love this, and we can take Jaw because Jaw loves this place. It's one of his favorite places in Los Angeles. So, Days with Jordan the Lion, Jaw, and this guy begins now! You want to go too? This is, I want people to see how you freak out when you know you're going somewhere. You're going to go to Ferndale Park with me? You want to go to Ferndale? You do? You do? Are you ready? You are? You're ready? Tell me when you're ready to go. Do you want to go to Ferndale Park? Alright, we've made it over to Griffith Park, and today will also be a special Patreon sunglass vlog for Scott. I hope you enjoy this vlog, Scott. We enter the park, we parked in a neighborhood, and there's a lot going on here, isn't there? Take a look at this place. So we're actually at the entrance of Griffith Park on Ferndale Drive, and this is where the Ferndale Nature Museum is. As we were standing here at the corner entrance waiting to cross the street, we just saw musician Moby pass by us in his Tesla, leaving the park. The best part about coming over here is all the plants and beautiful flowers they have. You know you're in the right section when you see the Smokey the Bear sign because the entrance to Ferndale is right across the street from this. Hi Smokey, right here. We've been here before to start a lot of our hikes but we haven't really talked about why this is here or what the significance is and things that have happened here. Now first you'll see a plaque for the Gabrielino Indian site. Archaeological evidence indicates the Indian villages were located in the Ferndale Canyon. That is because there was a natural spring that comes up here and 10,000 years ago this was a meeting place for many different Indian tribes passing through the desert and living out in the desert. Do not give cookies to the coyotes. All right, guide us in, Jaw. Now what's great about this is that it's man-made albeit man-made, but it's still amazing to have right here in the center of Los Angeles. In 1915, two brothers from New Zealand got the job of beautifying this area, and they built this wonderful little oasis of plants and beauty right out here in the center using that spring. Now, there's also an interesting story about this place because Steve Martin, in his book Born Standing Up, tells a great story about being out here. So when Steve Martin was standing out in stand-up comedy, he was performing in Westwood at a place called Leadbetters that eventually became the comedy store West. Now Leadbetters was ran by a man named Randy Sparks and this was basically a place for folky bands, stand-up performers, various people to come and perform at Hoot Nanny Nights. John Denver got his start there, and Steve Martin had started performing there. Randy Sparks, who owned the place, liked him and helped him get um, a free place to live in a garage above a mansion in Bel Air. Now, during this time, he met a girl named Melissa Trumbo. Her name was Mitzi. He called her Mitzi. She was 20 years old, and she was the daughter of Dalton Trumbo. 
and so he used to go over and have dinners and sleep over at her house and everything but she was also a photographer and he said that she had a camera with a lens on it the size of a Campbell soup can and at that time he was trying to take his first publicity photos so he said at the time it was the late 60s and the war was going on and flower power was popular so everybody was taking photos with flowers so Mitzi and Steve Martin came out here and did a photo shoot together and that was his first um, publicity photos that you saw they're out there floating around he's got like different flowers in his eyes and in his hair and everything but he also said what was significant was that later that day after they did this photo shoot and walked around here taking photos for a couple hours he said then they went to an anti-vietnam protest rally where he was lucky enough but he also said unlucky enough to lose his draft card that at that um, protest he had got signed by Cassius Clay who had become Muhammad Ali the most famous man in the world so he said he was um, unlucky enough to lose that autograph but he said he ended up um, when they called him to come in for service he said originally they um, put him in a category of not being fit because he had horrible migraines and then he said when they loosened that and they called him back in they gave him a middle number and by the time his number was called they had made it um, volunteer and he ended up not going. So they call this place Ferndale and it's because they have tons of ferns out here. Those were of course um, planted by the brothers. So they had to be kept up by uh, someone at the original time. So they're not as many and they're not as great a shape as they used to be. But what else is interesting about being out here is that even though those brothers did all this work in 1915, eventually it was stopped being cared for. And so it got overgrown and basically it was undistinguishable from what it was originally. Now, in its original form, Rudolph Valentino filmed a movie called The Young Raja that had a scene out here and I was trying to match it up for literally two years. I've come out here various points to try and match it up and I could never understand why I couldn't find the exact turns and the exact trees and everything that they stood at. And then I found where after the filming in the 30s, that's when it had been let go and um, it was overgrown. And then when they decided to fix it over the years, they had just changed all the pathways and everything. And you can see it by noticing some of these handrails and everything. These are actually handmade for this place. But you see these style handrails. They've had them ever since this place was built, created. You can see them in the movie. So when we come up here, I'll stop the camera at a point that really kind of demonstrates what you would have seen in the movie. But for a man-made created place, this is great. They just um, utilize that spring that's, I guess, like a mile and a half up the road. Look, it's a little gnome. And then built all of this around it for people to come out and hike. One of the other reasons this is so popular is as you can tell by all the shadows you're seeing, it's heavily shaded. So when it's a hot Los Angeles day, this is a great place to bring your dog for a hike like we're doing today. Takes you back out to the street. So right here I'll punch in some of the Valentino footage that would have all been filmed out here.
Now, like I said, this was originally created in 1915 and it is now 2020. So in the 105 years, it has changed drastically, but not really. I mean, they've kept the essence of it all. They've just kind of reformed it a little bit. On with the show, Ja. So how cool is that? Steve Martin's first headshots. A Rudolph Valentino was filmed out here. Rudolph Valentino film. And just a beautiful walk. So by the way, Steve Martin mentions this whole story in his book, Born Standing Up. I can't recommend that enough. If you like to read about people's lives, Born Standing Up is fantastic. The movie, The Young Raja, I wasn't really into as much, but it's really cool since I have hiked out here for 20 years, literally, to find out that that was filmed out here and then be able to see it in the movie and envision that myself. Looks like they got rid of the wooden post railings here. I don't know why. They're normally here, but looks like they're gone now. Going under the bridge. And another bridge. Since they've done this lockdown and everything, everywhere you go in Los Angeles, they're doing construction on the roads. So there, you got 10,000 years worth of history in this vlog. <laughs> oh, look at that, isn't that great? And they actually have redwood trees out here, believe it or not. You don't normally see those out here. I mean, out in this area. It's more coastline usually, I believe. See, there's one right in front of us. A couple of them actually. He has no time for us to stop apparently. <laughs> And now we've pretty much made it back to where we started, the Ferndale entrance. See? Hence the name. And down there is our little ending point. That's where it all ends here in the park. Always a fun time out here at Ferndale. Well, Except for that one time I vlogged out here and told that story about the missing starlet that they never found. That wasn't necessarily the greatest time to be out here, but other than that, it's always a pretty good time in Ferndale. And on that note, Smokey, we are out of Griffith Park for the day. Kind of crazy to see this hillside empty now because once they locked down all the beaches and didn't allow you to be out there, 
everybody was coming out here and laying on this hillside all day long. You'd drive past here and there'd be hundreds of people out here. Now the beaches are open again. <laughs> So I thought I'd add this from Steve Martin's book as well when he's talking about his time with Mitzi Trumbo. Um, he says that there was one of the times that he went over for a dinner party over there with her and her father and some of the friends and said he, this was the first time that he could remember uh, being in a room and them passing a joint around. And he said when it got to Trumbo, he didn't know how to smoke it apparently and said that when he would smoke it he would hold it really tight between his fingers and smoke it like a German officer from a movie and he said he remembered thinking that was kind of strange and he said that he never passed the joint he would just sit there holding it puffing on it and then Mitzi leaned over and said dad doesn't really know what he's doing he doesn't inhale so he never gets high but <laughs> Steve Martin said he used to kind of test the waters around there by spending the night and then he said he knew that uh, Mitzi's mom knew that he was spending the night but that her dad probably wouldn't approve so he said he would sneak out every morning and he said he would turn his key in his car real slowly thinking that somehow that would make the engine start slower and quieter and that nobody would hear him but he also said it was during this time of going over to their mansion that they had a really great art collection on the walls and that he developed an appreciation for art he thought that that's where his love for collecting art for his home came from was, was his time with Mitzi. Well Lionhearts we're gonna call it a night I hope you enjoyed that vlog and Steve Martin actually says in his book up until this point when he went there for the first time that was the most beautiful luscious place that he had ever been he said even though it was a man-made concrete tropical paradise it was right there in the middle of Los Angeles and you'd never know it existed if you didn't stumble upon it but he loved it there we're going to call it a night. Thank you, Linda Ellis, Julianne Valdez, Rick Hahn, and Kevin Hubbard for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all next time. From the new apartment, have a great night, and goodbye.